Okay, welcome to the Anfield Apps first ever preview show on video on YouTube. Uh, we're going to get excited about Liverpool v West Ham United at Anfield on Sunday. With me to do that, I've got Rob Gutman and I've got Paul Senior. Uh, what we're going to do first off is, is to talk about being excited about the game, being excited about the season. We're going to have a middle section where Neil Atkinson gets down and dirty with the tactics of both managers. And then we're going to look at a bit more about West Ham, a bit more about Liverpool. And we'll be with you for sort of 20 minutes or so, hopefully. Uh, first, first go at this. So we'd love to hear what your feedback is. Uh, be gentle with us. Also look out for, there will be a post-match show uh, after every Liverpool match this season called the Post-Match Pint. There'll also be another one after that, a more considered one uh, called the Second Look. So look out for all of this on YouTube in the coming days. Uh, this is us officially having a go at video now. Uh, so, OK, West Ham and the first day. Uh, before we talk about West Ham, Rob, uh, the first day in general is always an exciting time as a footy fan. Is there a little part of you that's gutted in a way that we've got to wait till Sunday 1.30 for, for Liverpool, your fix of Liverpool of your life? Yeah. Yeah, when it, you know, the fixtures get announced, then you have that little hiatus for about three weeks where you wait for Sky to make their minds up. And it is a kick in the pants, isn't it, to be to be on last. I always want to be on first thing. I mean, that Friday night one might be it might have been a bit weird. That that doesn't feel like the start of a season mm. sort of night, but I, quite frankly, the, the telly could start off at a light 3 p.m. on a Saturday, quite just to be a traditionalist about it. Yeah, it is a bit, it is a bit weird. And I think an afternoon game isn't the best for atmosphere. No, I mean, early afternoon games is the best for atmosphere. We'll get Klopp talked about that to us, including to us in the in the interview we did on Tour Player about he doesn't like Sunday kickoffs early. He feels that you know everyone's not as up for it. Mm. I think in this this instance though, we will be all right, but because everyone's so excited about the new season, that's what football football fans, this is the time where you can hope and dream and no points on the board all round and that sort of stuff. So, you know, you can go into it bouncing and I think most Liverpool fans will want it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all, all week, it's the WhatsApp groups, it's the how early are we getting out. And that's unique because it's the first game of the season and people have got that extra level of motivation to go and enjoy themselves. So if he doesn't like them, it's because of a lack of energy in the crowd or whatever. Then he's going to be absolutely fine because I don't think I don't think there is not a Liverpool fan that isn't excited out of this season. So yeah, it is a bit of, as Rob said, there's a bit of a kick in the pants not to be just a Saturday three o'clock a normal fixture. But as I said, in the past, I'm sure we've benefited from that. So excitement then, Rob. How excited should we be for the season? We know what Liverpool's business now is in the transfer window. That's closed now. That's done. We know what everyone else is doing as well now. So. You know how excited should we be? Where do you put on Liverpool's prospects this season? I'd, I'd like us to be treating. I know it's a cliche. Every game like a cup final from the word go. Let's go for it. You know what? It might all blow up in our faces. We might end up looking stupid, and all the preseason hype and expectation might look really, really um, ill-conceived. But at the moment, let's go for it. I want. You know, quite frankly, I know it's one thirty on a Sunday, and it's the first game of the season. I want, I'd love us to see the fact that people meet in the bus. <laughs> Flares, the work, but why not? Works, you know, doesn't it? Yeah, it does work. Let's get, let's hold on to what we had at the tail end of last season with the European Cup run. Let's get that. Do you know if we could navigate the first ten games and, and come out of it, sort of maybe top or a point off the top or whatever, that would set us up. I, I just, I'd love to see some early momentum. It's well, for me, there is a feel, I was just going to say there is a feel good though, isn't it, Paul? I mean, you know, the the preseason results, whether you read anything to them or not. They've been, by and large, good. We've seen good performances. We're excited again about Daniel Sturridge. We're hoping mm. he can stay fit. You know, there's lots and lots of positives, isn't there? And when you think about how last season ended and the disappointments of that, I think it's good where we are as a collective, the players, the fans, the manager. Everyone, everyone's up for this, aren't they? Absolutely. I mean, a lot's been said about the new signings. I sort of don't need to repeat. But for me, it's like, it's it's a little bit 13-14 again for me. But this summer where I've started to look at what Manchester City fans are saying. And... You know, you've seen some of them are going, you know, Liverpool could steal a march and what they're worried about is our momentum. And that's what Rob's saying is about um, about meeting the bus and stuff like that. I wonder if, you know, post-World Cup where players are coming back late and if Liverpool can hit the ground running because we do look ready that more than some of our rivals that a little bit of momentum and a really good start could could see that a lot earlier than uh, than normal. I uh, just wanted to talk about the opening day, Liverpool on the opening day. I've traditionally been pretty good. Uh, I know people sort of hate the phrase in the Premier League area, but that is 26 years now. Yeah. Uh, and in the Premier League area then, apologies, but uh, Liverpool have won 14, drawn eight and lost four on the opening day. So I just wanted to ask you both, sort of any good and bad memories of, of opening days, uh, Liverpool past? 
Yeah, and I don't know what, I'm not quite sure why, but it, it always comes to me when I think about an opening day. It seemed like the, I don't know, the quintessential opening day was, was against Bradford in 2000, beginning of the 2000, uh, 2001 season, the treble season. Uh, there's a bit of expectation. I think we'd beaten Palmer 5 0 in a preseason friendly the week before, and there's an expectation that we could hit the ground running. Some new signings were in the side, uh, ready to go. And it was a tense day, and Emil Heskey scores a real beauty about eight minutes from time. Massive re relief of tension. I think the, that's what the opening day is about. I think it's about getting something out of the way in a way. You need those three points. You need to be up and running. And so it's a relief to win it rather than a, an ecstasy or a joy that you might feel in a cup tie or whatever. Any you've enjoyed, Paul, in particular? Yeah, I think um, the 1 0 away at Stoke was one for me, just because of the 6 1 that came before it. Yeah. Uh, the, there's a a picture of me and Ian Lackinson post that match absolutely going off our heads, you know. That, that Necking was, each other. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, that that was a good one. And, um, but yeah, there's been, there's, there has been a couple of bad ones along the way as well. Guys. Yeah, I mean, a bad one that sticks out for me is obviously Brendan Rodgers' first one in charge, uh, away at the Hawthorns. We lose 3-0. Agus sends off. Rainer saves a penalty. Uh, Isn't Lukaku doing all sorts of bits? Lukaku scored yeah. as well. It, it kind of felt like everything went wrong that day and it wasn't wasn't a good day and not one to remember. One to remember, uh, older one, uh, Palace away, we won 6-1. Uh, a yeah. couple of a rush, a couple for McManaman. That's a, there's a forgotten McManaman goal there, by the way, where he runs pretty much from the halfway line and bends it in the corner, which was an absolute beauty. Uh, yeah. Mulby from the spot as well, Fowler. That was a good way to start. That'd be all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was that was handy, wasn't it? Bit of a false storm, that one. Um, yeah, the other one that sticks in my mind, now you reminded me from that era, is the 3 3 at Borough where Ravinelli gets his hat trick and puts the shirt over his head, and everyone everyone thought that was the best thing that had ever yeah. happened. My, my one was Collie Moore when I was a kid as well, oh, yeah. at Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, there, was, there seemed to be a lot of excitement going into that season as well, if I remember rightly. Because of him, mate. Yeah. He, he, was a, he was a Premier League record signing mm. at that stage. I think it was like eight or nine million. Yeah, that was another false story. That was a 1-0, wasn't it? Bent yeah. into the top corner. There's a lot of tight games, it seems, on yeah. opening, opening days. I mean, we're all, we can all get excited and predict sort of 5 nils and what have you, but it, the likelihood is that this will be probably another tight game. Um, how will the two sides set up at Anfield? What will the two managers, Jürgen Klopp and Mambo Pellegrini, do? Well, Neil's been speaking to West Ham fans. He's got a nice, tasty little bit of kit to mess around with as well. So here's Neil getting down and dirty with the tactics that we might see this weekend. West Ham United have played seven pre-season friendlies with the new manager Pellegrini in charge. Pellegrini, we might remember, when he was at Manchester City, he loved 4-4-2. Aguero and Dzeko up top, that was the way in which they beat us to the league that season playing that shape. It's always been the football he'd like to play. But in pre-season, six of his seven games, he's actually played with something that looks more like this. Some people might say it's 4-2-3-1, others might say it's 4-5-1. I think it's more 4-1-4-1. It's footballers who make formations as far as I'm concerned, not formations making footballers. And in these two here, he's got Wilshire and Noble. They're the two centre midfielders and they both do do box-to-box -box work. That's what they're about. The key man in all of this is this guy here, Declan Rice. He's 19 years old. He got 32 games last season for West Ham United. Does some stuff at centre-back, does some stuff at left-back, but this is where his long-term future is. I spoke to Andy Middleton on our team talk show and he thinks Declan Rice will be West Ham's player of the year this year. He's a really exciting prospect. Elsewhere, they've got Philippe Anderson who's been playing off the left-hand side there, joining Arnautovic up top. Arnautovic has got five goals in pre-season. Anderson's impressed in patches, but they paid the big money for him, so you've got to expect him to start at Anfield and he may well tuck in and get close to Arnautovic. On this side, there's a bit of a decision for them to make between Antonio and Yarmolenko. Antonio's been the fitter one throughout pre-season, so you'd suspect, expect him to keep his shirt. What's really interesting is the back line, the back five, is not decided at all, including the goalkeeper. Fabianski and Adriana slogging it out for who's going to start. You'd have thought Fabianski going there, he would expect that shirt, but Adrian saw off Joe Hart last season. Right back could be Fredericks, they've got from Fulham on a free transfer, he was in the Championship Team of the Year, or it could be Zavaleta. Ogbonna is expected to start left and centre half. The other two, Diop and Balbuena, are battling it out to start alongside him. And Creswell, who we're used to seeing at Anfield, uh, he's up against Masuaku, and Creswell hasn't been the fittest during pre-season either. 
As this plays out, it's worth remembering West Ham have had seven pre-season friendlies. We've had a number as well. So these two sides could be in pretty good nick. We know what we do. We know how this works. There's your Salah, there's Firmino, and there's Mane. We're expecting Keita to do bits around here. So if all these lads are occupying with the full-backs pushing up from Liverpool, the key man could actually be what Wijnaldum does if he starts. The run we sort of make against Torino to slot from this sort of area could be exactly the sort of thing that gets us through against West Ham. It's not the West Ham of last season. They're not going to turn up. They're not going to be passive. But they're also not going to be overloaded in midfield. They're going to take some beating, I think, some breaking down. But we know this Liverpool side. We know that it could just blow a team away early. But we also know that it's prepared to work in graft. It could be a long afternoon at Anfield. Both sides have got a sub on 60. Yarmolenko, Hernandez. They've just bought Lucas Perez. Both sides have got a sub, but it could well be a game that Liverpool are able to win by outmanning West Ham in these key areas here. Overwhelming Rice, Noble and Wiltshire. OK, interesting stuff from Neil there. He loves all that, doesn't he? Um, what I've done with these gents, though, as well, is I've asked them to predict the teams this weekend. So we're going to have a little chat through that. Uh, you'll, you'll see up on the screen uh, Rob's predicted Liverpool team for the weekend. Uh, Rob, you've gone with uh, Becker in goal. I don't think there's any arguments over that. You've gone Alexander-Arnold, Gomez, Van Dijk, Robertson, Vinaldum, Fabinho, Keita, Salah, Firmino, Firmino. I don't want to get shouted out about that. Firmino. Uh, Firmino. Uh, and Mane. Mm -hmm. um, this was the other day when you gave me this one. Uh, any any changes since? There's a little bit of a doubt about Fabinho, isn't there? Yeah, he didn't. He, he wasn't in training Thursday. I don't know. It sounds like a tight muscle. I think he probably makes it. If he doesn't, it gets a bit more complicated. There was some speculation whether Jordan Henderson, because he looks fitter than everyone appreciated, might just step straight back into his number six spot. But when Aldum's had a good pre-season, well, he was particularly good against Torino, yeah. although in an attacking role, he could he could effortlessly slip back in. Um, I think I think I think the back I mean, people are taking for granted that that Trent starts, but it's, he has got a decision to make there because he's had very little football, uh, Trent. So. Is he, he going to? Like, night, he though, did. He? he did look good, but he, if you pick Trent, you've got to sort of plan to take him off on seventy almost. Just you've got to protect his legs. That's the, he's got the same situation with Firmino. I think the team sort of picks itself if if everyone's fit in the way I, I've said. But the it does depend. The substitutes then have to pick themselves. If, yeah. if there's a break glass moment, you have to then <clears> give someone ninety. So you can't overexpose. I th I think Shakiri could start. He's had a full preseason. Where would you put him? Oh, I think you just. I think for West Ham at home, you just play one Alderman in the Alden role if. If Fabinho's not available, so that, play him in the David Silva position. Yeah, just so play him as, num as a number eight, number ten. You know, be exciting, man. It yeah, would be, and at the last game of the season against Brighton, he just went with two in midfield, didn't he? So it, it would, it would be, it would mean, it would be a, a, an offensive lineup. But but can I just stop you? I think if he was going to do that, I half thought he would do that against Torino. Mm. I think have a look at what that looks like. I think the reason he won't do it, unless he's forced to through, through other injuries, is he wants that change off the bench. But it's Jordan Henderson's dependence, I would say. That, that. True, but I, but you know, I, I think, and you saw it the other day, he wants that impact. He knows he's got two, two lads who are going to tire out of Marnie and Salah. Firmino's going to tire, he's had mm -hmm. less football. He's going to want to be able to put on attacking uh, pa 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 pace and power. My thing is, he, he's only got three subs, and that's, yeah. and that's where I think he has to pick his team around, whether whether he can afford to do all these lads that he, he really needs to take off. So that Shaqiri wouldn't fall into that um, into that category. And that's my, my only doubt is whether he can go, well, I might need to take three lads off. I think that's a risk in case someone unexpected pulls up with a knock, which you can see early on in the season. Yeah. Any any argument for flipping uh, Firmino and Sturridge? Starting with Sturridge and having Firmino on the bench? I, I, the danger is that Daniel's fitness is always fragile, isn't it? And I think he's not given him more than 45 at all, I don't think, in the preseason. And I think if you start him, you almost, you have to commit to 65-70. And that, he might think that's taken too much of a chance. You may as well pay for me, though. You may as well pay for me. I think that's, that's that flip just pre, that will be preordained that. Firmino starts off on 65. It won't last longer than that. Daniel has a, has a nice little run out. I think that's what he'll plan to do. OK, Paul, your West Ham team then. Uh, Fabianski, Fredericks, Diop, Ogbonna, Cresswell, Obiang, Wilshire, Anderson, Yarmolenko, Arnautovic and Shikarito here. So you've gone a little bit different to some of the stuff Neil talked about. You're, you're thinking maybe more of a 4-4-2? 
Yeah, it, with with Anderson playing right and Obiang in the middle, yeah, from what we've got, I don't know if that's listed on the graphic, but um, I, they've also done some transfer business as yeah, well indeed, since, yeah. so that may throw a spanner in the works, but I think um, I think you'll see Creswell revert back to being a left-back, and they've signed Ryan Fredericks from, from Fulham over the summer, so I think he starts... Um, Wilshire is is one that I can see. I don't I don't know what the situation with Mark Noble is this season with the manager, but it looks like that Obiang and Wilshire will probably play in the midfield. It's them whether he want, he's got I suppose got the bottle to go to up against Liverpool. Alan Ansovic can can drop off, and he's he's done all right against us in the past. He's, he's, he's a been decent a, player. He's a decent player, and he's one that I think West Ham will be score five in pre season as well. As he yeah. yeah. So he's I mean, their star man isn't he very much? He now. is, but they've added. I mean, Yarmolenko was someone that Liverpool fans wanted for a long time, mm-hmm. you know. So West Ham have added interestingly, and I think if this was like 2013 or something, you'd be going some really exciting players in there, but ones that haven't quite cut it at other clubs. So I think I think they'll be better. Pellegrini, the manager. Uh, you know, if you look back to what he did at uh, Villarreal and Malaga, obviously he's won the league in England as well. But I think that's what West Ham are hoping for with him, and it looks like he's got a decent side together. Uh, something else I wanted to look at as well is is West Ham's recent record at Anfield. Uh, it looks pretty good for Liverpool. Obviously, the only sort of blemish on the the last five trips is the the three 0 victory. That was their got. first win at Anfield, wasn't it? Ever, I think, it was since nineteen sixty three. That day was you know Coutinho was sent off. Firmino was <laughs> substituted after an hour. It was pretty much the nail in the coffin for Brendan Rodgers. That that result. Um, but other than that, we've we've pretty much always had our way, as it were. A couple of years ago. West Ham. A couple of years ago, there's a two-two. There's a two-two. And, that's and right. That sort of checked us in our stride a little bit under Jurgen, but we got we got it back on track against them. But this is the strongest West Ham team I think we'll have faced, certainly on paper coming into coming into the game. It's really it's it's a really tricky one to call this actually, I, and it's a tricky one for West Ham as to whether they you know they're, they're going to be confident they got they got a good new manager, they have got a job lot of new players who seem decent on paper. Do they come and have a go at Liverpool? Do they go? We're just not. We're, we're not parking a bus. We're, we're going to throw the script away and have a proper go. That may suit us down to the ground. It's very hard to say on first days because fitness levels, freshness levels are can create bizarre results. Like you, you, you that that six 0 you talk about against Palace. That happens only on a first day of a season, in a way. Mm. Yeah, West, West Ham for me, they'll, they'll be a bit more of a. A difficult opposite. I think generally talking about West Ham, I think they'll have a better season. If they can sort that atmosphere out at home, I think they'll be in a in a much better position. But it's a difficult uh, ask that though. Isn't there's it? a lot against the side that's pretty well. Yeah, that, I mean, no, you remember uh, last season that you know the fans are, are basically kicking off. Oh yeah. They, they finished thirteenth in the end, but they did flirt with relegation for a while. They obviously went through a couple mm. of managers as well. Um, I mean, you know. Yes, they've spent some money, and yes, they've now got the, the most highly paid manager they've ever had in the history of the club. So they've had to go. Mm. But there's all that fix everything that's come before. Well, no, away. and they're also up against the side that was playing in the Champions League final a few weeks ago as well, and a team that you know you're looking at our own paper there. It hasn't changed all that much. We and what we have changed is only uh, is only a positive for me. So West Ham might take a little bit of time to get to know each other. There's a lot of new lads in there, so. I mean, if you ask me for a prediction, I'm only going for Liverpool on Sunday. I just wanted to talk through some of the players that might play as well, because they have made a lot of signings, as you say. So Fabianski, who looks to be an upgrade in goal. Uh, Issa Diop, it's 22 a club, club 22 record million. signing, yeah. So, they, again, they're having to centre go. Half. Yeah, centre-half. And they've had to go in the right area there, where it would have been easy. Obviously, they've, they've managed to add Yarmolenko for nothing. And with Arnautovic, they're pretty, pretty well stocked up top so they're looking they're looking to procure problem positions and that looks to be the well Felipe Anderson as well is I was going to say 36 million from uh, Lazio I was going to say he was a club record for a short period of time yeah. wasn't how he? many so, debuts are they looking at for this game it's quite well, a few Fredericks, Fabianski uh, Diop Wilshire, Anderson Yarmolenko so this yeah plus two today possibly well potentially yes, yes. Carlos Sanchez is one isn't it Colin used to play at Villa handy enough footballer so uh, pre-season, as I mentioned, uh, five goals uh, in pre-season for Arnautovic. Uh, they played seven pre-season games, as Neil mentioned earlier before. Uh, they won five, they drew one with Preston, and they lost one as well, but that was a very inexperienced side that played that day. They defeated Wickham 1-0, uh, Aston Villa 3-1, Ipswich 2-1, Mainzer 1-1, but they won 7-6 on pens, and then French side Angers, they beat 1-0. Uh, other little bits then, it is obviously on uh, Sky Sports, Kick off 1.30pm 
on Sunday. A uh, bit of betting as well here. Uh, Liverpool are four to one on to win. The draw is five to one, and you can get ten to one. Uh, on West Ham to get a victory. Uh, I wanted to ask you just about this one as well, Rob. I know you like a little flutter. There's a Reds oh, bet. Guys, yeah. There's a Reds bet special kicking about. Uh, see if you fancy this. Liverpool to score 100 Premier League goals this season, 25 to one. Fancy that? Uh, well, you know me. I like to bet against us. So what, <laughs> just as a compo. So what's the odds on us not scoring 100 goals? Actually, what did we get last season? Is it in the 90s? It was in the 80s, wasn't it? Was it? Okay. Yeah. That's a big ask, 100 goals. No, nah, it's not going to happen. Well, we, did, we did that under Rodgers, didn't we? 100 goals yeah, we in 13, yeah. 14. Yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd have a bit of that. Yes, that's what we want. Uh, predictions then, you mentioned predictions. Paul, go with you first. What, how do you see the game going? What do you think the score is Just big be? West Ham up, 4-1 Liverpool. Is right. <laughs> Rob? 3-1 Liverpool. OK. Uh, and my one, I'm going to go 2-0 to Liverpool. I think it'll be tight. Uh, there will be more video from us, as I mentioned, post-match pint uh, on, on Sunday straight after the game. That'll be out there. Look out for that. Second look next week. Give us your feedback on all of this stuff. It is all new. We're trying it out. We're doing our best. Uh, we're having some technical problems behind the scenes at times. So, you know, if you see Sam on the streets, give him a big hug. Uh, but in general, up the Reds and see you at Anfield. It's going to be great. 